So why Georgia and why Baghdad? The Georgia part is easy to explain. I grew up in a bicultural household. My father was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, like me, and my mother was born in Gordon, Georgia. When I was a kid, I didn't know uh, there was any place you could go on vacation other than Georgia. Vacation and Georgia were synonyms, as far as I knew. So, I've kind of got a long background with Georgia, and while I was writing this book, the voice that I was hearing in my head was my mother's older sister, Aunt Sissy, who still lives in Georgia. My mother is now in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, so the Georgia part is kind of easy to explain, but the, I think I've always planned, and even have it on other occasions written um, stories and materials that drew on, on, on that, that whole, um, that place and those people and those voices. Um, the Baghdad part, well, the Baghdad part came into it in 2003. Um, uh, and I, I kind of got it in my head that I wanted to write a novel. Um, I wanted to write a novel uh, in which Americans had a different relationship to Baghdad than the one that was developing uh, in 2003. I mean, when I thought of Baghdad, before then, I, I thought of, uh, you know, you thought of Baghdad between the Tigris and the Euphrates, the cradle of civilization thought of the Arabian Nights and Harun al-Rashid, um, the caliph, Harun al-Rashid, uh, who was, you know, one of the great adventurers of the Arabian Nights. He thought of all those kinds of things. Uh, uh, the site of Babylon, right, the home of Hammurabi, the lawgiver, and ultimately, you know, the source of, uh, of our own um, system of law. Uh, so that's what I had in mind. And I started reading up about uh, Baghdad, and one of the Early on, what I found was a wonderful travelogue uh, uh, sort of book called The Camel Bells of Baghdad, written by Janet Miller, who, if you, um, uh, you find out early on, has a part to play in the book. But Janet Miller was a, a real person who wrote a real book called The Camel Bells of Baghdad. Uh, she was a physician. Uh, she was, in fact, from Nashville, Tennessee. And back in the 20s and 30s, she was like a one-woman doctor without borders. She worked in Africa and in uh, Japan and, and other places around the world. Uh, so in the in the Caliphs of Baghdad, Georgia, she's the person that introduces Miss Spivey as her young traveling companion and assistant to the Middle East um, in the years before Miss Spivey came to Three Steps. Um, I found out a lot about um, kind of the beginnings of modern day Iraq, about Iraq in the First World War, uh, and um, uh, lots of things that were very enlightening. Um, but uh, the most amazing discovery I made was uh, on a trip to Georgia, kind of looking for, it was sort of a final trip um, before I would sit down and write the last draft of the book, I thought. Uh, and I needed a, I needed a coastal island um, off Georgia for purposes of the plot, and I won't go into all of that, but um, my husband and I went to take the once a month Tuesday tour of Sapelo Island. And while we were waiting to get on the boat, we were in a little visitor center, we, um, looking at the displays, uh, I came across, uh, I noticed that there was a notebook, and the notebook seemed to be written in Arabic, you know, and it was handwritten Arabic script. Uh, this was kind of an astonishing thing. It turned out that I didn't have to look very far for a, an Arabian or Islamic connection to my characters uh, in Georgia because that notebook had belonged to a slave, Bilali Mahomet, who uh, had been purchased uh, in 1803 by the plantation owner who, um, whose plantation covered most of Sapelo Island at that time. And Bilali Mahomet was a literate Muslim. He'd been kidnapped as a teenager um, from West, his home in West Africa. And I uh, kind of started reading in that direction and found out that there were other slaves who were literate Muslims. Uh, so. It was uh, an astonishing thing. At the time, it required that I sit back and uh, not write the final draft of my book, but uh, kind of start retooling the story to make room for um, this amazing, what was for me, an amazing discovery.